Welcome. This is what is happening on the Sun today, the 17th of March 2012. There have been many reports of a mysterious object orbiting between us and the Sun. Today we're going to see if we can figure out what it is. But first our trivia question. We have tens of thousands of pieces of space junk in orbit around the Earth. What is the oldest man-made object in orbit? And when was it launched? Here is an additional rather cryptic clue. It has a powerful solar connection. Perhaps you've seen the videos here on YouTube claiming that there is a mysterious object orbiting between us and the Sun. It has been seen in the NASA images as it gradually crosses in front of the Sun, as shown here in this AIA Helium-2 304 image. It can also be seen in the NOAA GOES X-ray images. Pretty spooky stuff, eh? Actually, I've already explained what this is in several of my earlier videos. But as the hubbub continues, I thought I should feature it in a video when the sun is not too active, like today. As always, I first approach a problem by gathering data about it, and see what that data can tell us. First let's look at a sequence of images of today's passage of the mysterious object. At 621 UT, there is no sign of the object, but just one minute later the sun starts to disappear. Within two minutes it is completely gone. So from this we've established that it takes about two minutes for the object to cross the solar disk. Remember that, for it will be useful later. Now let's see how long the SDO satellite is in shadow. At 7.34 the sun starts to reappear, and by 7.36 the object has moved on. So it takes about 73 minutes for the SDO spacecraft to traverse the shadow of the object. We can use this information to work out the approximate size of the object. As we know that the spacecraft is travelling about 2.6 kilometres per second from its altitude, and the orbital period. We can use the time difference from the beginning to the end of the eclipse and the speed of the spacecraft to determine the distance. And from that we can determine that the size of the object is about 11,500 kilometers across, at least. That's nearly as big as Venus or Earth. I say at least because we don't know if SDO is passing through the middle of the shadow, or how far it is away, so how much the shadow is converged, so the object could be larger than this. Next we can establish that this is a regular phenomenon. If we go back to yesterday's or the day before's data, we can see a similar effect. And almost at exactly the same time. So it looks as though this object is orbiting locally. If that is the case, we can see how far it is away by using the fact that it takes two minutes for it to cross the disk of the Sun. The solar disk is about half a degree across, and if it takes two minutes to cross the Sun, it should be 720 times longer to make a complete orbit. So 720 times 2 minutes is 24 hours. So the object is orbiting every 24 hour hours. That explains why we see it regularly at the same time each day. But it also gives us a distance of about 36,000 kilometers. Seemingly coincidental that the same distance that SDO is orbiting above the Earth and with the same period. Now all we need to do is to find out where SDO was at about 700 UT, the middle of the eclipse, and we can locate where the object is. The SDO is located above 102 degrees west longitude, or about 7 hours behind London's time. So at 7 UT, SDO would be in local midnight, i.e. in the Earth's shadow. So the mysterious object is us, the Earth. <clears throat> if you go back to earlier data, you will see similar eclipses in the SDO and GOES data, as far back as it goes. And it always happens at this time of year and in September. But why does it happen? During the summer summer, which we've just had, the South Pole is tilted towards the Sun. And because of the size and tilt of the SDO orbit, that means it can see the Sun all the time. Similarly, during the Northern Hemisphere's summer season, it can see the Sun all of the time. However, twice a year, near the equinoxes, the Sun, the Earth, and the plane of the SDO orbit all align. And so for a brief period each day, the satellite passes through the Earth's shadow and so can't see the Sun. This explains why the size of the object and the distance from SDO is so similar to the Earth, because, of course, it is the Earth. So the next time you see a video or blog extolling the virtues of mysterious planets moving in front of the Sun, you'll be able to tell them what, in fact, they are seeing. The answer to today's trivia question, the oldest man-made object still in orbit, is the Vanguard 1 satellite, which was launched in 1958. It was also the first satellite to be powered by solar cells, 
Earlier satellites had relied on batteries, so they did not last very long. A heads up, on Thursday, March the 29th at 7.30pm, I'll be giving a public lecture at the Howard B. Owen Science Centre in Lanham, Maryland, for the Astronomy Society of Greenbelt. All are welcome. The title of the talk is The Sun's Role in Global Warming. Follow the link below to see the ASG website. If you'd like to find out more about what is happening on the Sun, you can follow the links in the description box below. If you like this video and would like to see others that I have made on a variety of science issues, please go to my channel, they're all listed there. <clears throat> if you want to keep abreast of solar activity, please subscribe, and I would be grateful if you would pass this link on to friends, neighbours and relations who might be interested in this subject too. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.